Hello, and welcome to Elevator Pitch Series for the Radiographer. I am Michael, and this is the seventh video in the series on radiographic imaging. We'll be picking up from where we left off in the last video. This time, we'll be looking at the process of visible image formation in film screen radiography. We'll be finding out what a visible image is and the stages in visible image formation. We'll also be looking at the various constituents of developer and fixer solutions. In simple terms, a visible radiographic image is one that can be seen. In the last video, we learned that exposure to photons causes a silver halide grain to go through a series of steps that eventually ends up with hundreds of metallic silver atoms clumped together at the sensitivity spec. We however, pointed out that this clump is invisible and would need a process called development to become visible. Take note that, even though the image is made visible during development, to produce an image that is not only visible but permanent as well, a four-stage process is needed. Development, fixing, washing and drying. We look at these steps in a bit more detail. We start out with development. It occurs when the film is placed in a developer solution. This developer solution has an active ingredient which is a reducing agent. We must have heard in high school chemistry that a reducing agent is named so because it donates electrons to another compound, causing reduction of the compound. In this case, the reducing agent in the developer donates electrons to the development center, thus further reducing the exposed silver halide grains to black metallic silver. The implication of this is that, when there were a few hundred clumps of metallic silver due to exposure to photons, development amplifies this effect such that the clump is much bigger and can be seen by the human eyes. This produces a visible image. Worthy of mention is the fact that the developing agent is able to recognize which silver halide grain has been exposed to photons and which hasn't through what is known as a bromine charge barrier. You see, it is believed that a bromine charge barrier which repels electrons donated by a reducing agent normally surrounds sensitivity specs, but exposure to photons weakens or destroys this charge barrier. This means that grains that have been exposed to radiation will permit electrons from the developing agents to get to their sensitivity spec due to their destroyed bromine charge barriers, and those that haven't been exposed would still have their bromine charge barriers intact, repelling electrons. The developer solution is made of multiple constituents which aid its function of transforming a radiographic image from invisible to visible. Let us look at these constituents, one by one. The first is the developing agent. This is the main or active ingredient which performs the function of reducing invisible silver halide grains to visible metallic silver. It is the reducing agent that we spoke of earlier. While there are many types in use, the most common developing agent is phenidin hydroquinone. Next is the solvent. The solvent serves as the carrying medium for other constituents. Another function of the solvent is to soften the gelatin of the film, allowing other constituents to enter easily. As you may have guessed, the most common solvent used is water. Next is the accelerator. The developing agent, phenidin hydroquinone, needs an alkaline or basic environment to function. The accelerator provides an alkaline pH of between 9.8 and 11.4, the most common accelerator used is potassium carbonate. Remember when we mentioned how a bromine charge barrier prevents the development of unexposed silver halide grains? At this point, we should also point out that this holds true only for a certain period of time. If the film is left in a developer solution for a long period of time, the solution eventually breaks the charge barrier and develops an unexposed grain, this leads to a phenomenon known as chemical fogging. This reduces the contrast of the radiographic image. This is where the restrainer comes in. It reduces the tendency of the unexposed grain getting developed. It does this by placing an extra bromine charge barrier around the unexposed grains. The most widely used restrainer is potassium bromide, commonly known as antifogant. Because of the function of reduction carried out by the developing agent, it has a tendency to break down, get oxidized and become useless. The preservative helps to extend the lifespan of the developing agent by preventing processes like aerial oxidation. A common preservative used in the developer solution is potassium sulfite. Processes such as aerial oxidation can affect the pH of the developer solution. A buffer effect is needed to maintain the alkaline pH that the accelerator provides. However, no extra buffer is usually added to the developer solution. This is because a buffer effect is already provided by the restrainer and the preservative. Next is the hardener. This prevents excessive swelling of the emulsion layer due to excess absorption of water. 
This is important because most modern day processing is carried out with the use of automatic processors which are equipped with rollers for transporting the films from one processing container to the other. If the film is swollen, it would not easily pass through these rollers, causing a jam. The most common hardener found in the developer solution is glutaraldehyde. The final constituent of the developer solution is the sequestering agent. There is a tendency for salts to precipitate or form on the surface of the emulsion as a byproduct of the development process. Sequestering agents like ethylene diamond tetraacetic acid, EDTA for short, help to prevent this. After placing the film in the developer solution for a sufficient amount of time, the radiographic image becomes visible. However, we are not done. A silver halide grain that has been developed to metallic silver is no longer sensitive to light, but an unexposed silver halide grain that was not developed is still sensitive to light. This means that if a film containing unexposed grains were brought to a source of light, the grains would react and the film would be fogged. This is where the process of fixing comes in. Fixing helps to get rid of unexposed silver halide grains by dissolving them out of the solution. When this happens, the film is left with only metallic silver that will not react to light and will not fog the film. The four known functions of a fixer solution are to stop the activity of the developer, to clear the film of unexposed silver halide grains, to render the image chemically and photographically stable, and to complete the process of hardening that was started in the developer solution. Now, let us look at all constituents of the fixer solution. The first constituent of the fixer solution that we'd be looking at is the fixing agent. It is the ingredient that performs the function of dissolving unexposed silver halide grains, thus rendering the image photographically and chemically stable. Ammonium theosulfate is the fixing agent of choice. Next up, the solvent. Just like in the developer solution, a solvent is needed to serve as a carrying medium for other constituents. Water is the solvent used in the fixer solution too. Another constituent of the fixer solution is acid. An acidic environment is needed by the fixer solution for two important reasons. First, because the developer needs an alkaline environment to function, the acidic environment of the fixer solution will ensure all activity of leftover developer on the film is stopped as soon as the film is placed in the fixer container. Secondly, the hardener used in a fixer solution requires an acidic environment to function. Acetic acid is commonly used to provide this acidic environment of between pH 4.0 and 4.5. Next is the buffer. Even though an acidic environment is required by the fixer solution, too acidic environment would destroy it. You see, a phenomenon known as sulfurization occurs at too low pH, it is the breakdown of the ammonium theosulfate, which renders the fixer solution useless. Sodium acetate provides a buffering effect by maintaining the pH of the fixer solution within the desired range. Another constituent of the fixer solution is the preservative. This elongates the usability of the fixer solution by also delaying the onset of sulfurization. A good fixer solution preservative is sodium sulfite. Next is the hardener. Hardening needs to continue in the fixer solution because a hardened radiographic film is more resistant to scratch in future, this increases its archival permanence, or as it is commonly referred to, shelf life. While the hardener in the developer solution is glutaraldehyde, in the fixer solution, aluminum chloride is the hardener you'll find. The final constituent of the fixer solution is the anti-sludge agent. The hardener in the fixer solution has a certain byproduct called sludge. Now, sludge has a tendency to stain the X-ray film, degrading its quality. Boric acid prevents formation of the sludge. When some fixer solution is left on the surface of the radiographic film, it is known as fixer retention. This would at some point cause the radiograph to have a yellow-brown stain. This is why washing of the film is done after fixing, to get rid of the fixer solution and all by-products of fixing. Common methods of washing are through the use of wash containers or baths and taps. And it doesn't stop at washing. Have you ever tried writing on a wet piece of paper? Doing that would most likely tear the piece of paper. A wet film is also very fragile and brittle. Drying is performed by hot air chambers and squiggy rollers. We have successfully looked at the stages of visible image formation. Let us conclude by looking at some factors that affect how fast or how well development and fixing occur. The first factor affecting development or fixing is time. The longer time spent on either of these processes, the more the activity would occur. For example, if the film is kept in the developer bath for too long, there would be excess developer activity, which leads to fogging. Another factor is temperature. 
For both developer and fixer solutions, the higher the temperature, the higher the activity of the solution. Last is the individual constituents of each solution. The state in which each constituent is, and the amount of each constituent, affects the performance of the solution as a whole. That concludes this video on visible image formation and film screen radiography. We look forward to your questions and comments in the comments section or via email. If you love this video and would want more content, please subscribe and share with your colleagues. Until next time, do enjoy the learning process and take care.